Welcome to LabMinutes.com. In this video, we will look at different options on how the EasyVPN client can initiate a VPN connection, as well as different ways that you can do an XAuth authentication on the hardware client. So from the previous video that we created, we have successfully configured a EasyVPN head-end and the EasyVPN client, and we were able to provide a VLAN 32 to VLAN 128 connectivity, but we have left everything in a auto connect mode as well as have all the user accounts configured and used locally on the router. But in this video, we're going to play around with the different connect options. So if I show you the config, Right here we left it as a connect auto with the username password and we tell the router to use the local credential. So we're going to be playing around with this, the different options under the connect command as well as the X off command. Okay, so right now just to show you, we our easy VPN tunnel is currently up. Okay, with the IP from the head end 100.33. And here we can ping 1632.1, which is our switch behind the head end uh, IP. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to, instead of allowing automatic connection, we're going to turn that into a uh, manual, which requires a user or an administrator to manually initiate the tunnel. So let me bring up a notepad. And we can copy that section of the config out. Okay, so if you go to connect command, you can see three different options. We already did auto. Next, we're going to do manual. And we want to get rid of the store username and password. You see, as soon as you enter manual, it took down the tunnel. And Instead of doing X auth mode local, we're going to do interactive because it's going to be prompting a user to enter username and password. Okay, so here the tunnel is currently down. It said connect required. That means we need to manually initiate a connection, and the command for that is crypto ipsec client easy VPN connect. Since we only have uh, one easy VPN group configuration, uh, we're just going to go connect. Okay, next it asks you to do crypto IPsec client easy VPN X auth command. At this point, phase one is halfway through. So until we complete that, so as soon as you enter that command, it prompts you for username. It will be site and password Cisco. And as soon as you provided a valid credential, it brings up the tunnel. Okay, so ISACAM SA is up. If you look at the easy VPN, it's also up. You can see the next time it grabs the next IP in the pool, dot thirty four. And if you go back to our ping test, we have a connectivity from one to, uh, VLAN 128 to VLAN 32. Okay, so that's our first option. It might not be very practical because it requires somebody to lock into the router and issue that. Um, let's see, the client ECPN connect command. So it, it might not be a good idea to provide your regular user and access to the router anyway. So, but just to show you, basically this is the, one of the options that's available. Okay, so next we're going to try, instead of doing manual, let's say you don't want your easy VPN tunnel to stay up all the time. We just want the tunnel to come up when there is a matching 
uh, in, of the interesting interesting traffic that you can specify. So anything else, if there's no traffic, you just don't want the tunnel to stay connected. And the way to do that, you go connect, and there's an option of ACL. You have to specify ACL. So before we can issue that command, you have to create an access list. And let's call that easy VPN interesting. It will be permit IP any any traffic that's going towards 32.0 subnet. Okay, now that we have that, we can jump back to our easy VPN section with connect ACL. But we still want to do user uh, username storage and use a local username. We just don't want the the connection the VPN to be automatically connected, although there's not really a traffic going through it. So show cry sa. Let's make sure you clear that and see the tunnel is down right now. Okay, we have our ACL. So let's generate some interesting traffic, which is just as simple as a ping. See, it's not going through, and it takes about one ping loss for the tunnel to come up. Okay, you show access list, you can see this one match, and that's our first ping that went through. And now, the, once the router sees the it's a traffic that matches the specified ACL, it brings up the tunnel. Okay, so that's your second option. The third option that we're going to look at is to provide interactive XAuth authentication to a user. So it actually requires a user to, instead of locking into the router console and initiate that one command we saw earlier to start performing the XAuth, we're going to do that through the web browser. So when the tunnel is down and the user is trying to connect or open a browser and connects through the router, the user will get redirected to a page where user can select if they want to initiate the tunnel or just want to pass through to, VP, uh, to the internet. So in order to do that, we're just going to have to tweak a few commands. So for the connect, we're going to go back to manual. We want to get rid of the username and password again, since the user is going to be the one entering that password. Our credentials. And with the XAuth user ID mode, we're going to, it's going to be HTTP intercept. Okay. With that configured, we're going to clear Crypto IPsec client easy VPN. Okay, so that's all clear. Next, we're going to bring up a web browser. So, again, from our test PC.32. So, the ping doesn't really do anything. So, let's assume you want to hit the 32.1. Oh, there's one thing I think we forgot to do, which is enabling HTTP server. Okay, so you can see as soon as you enable HTTP server on the background here, it gets redirected to a tunnel activation page. So here you have an option of bring up the tunnel or just pass through to internet. Okay, so we're going to have our ping going in the background, and here we're going to select connect now to bring up the tunnel okay now it's prompting you for username password and it'll be the same username site and password Cisco so unless you do that your ping went through okay and you can see it can hit the HTTP server on the switch okay So this option might be practical uh, for you. 
So you might have a remote site with a few users at the site, but you want the user to explicitly authenticate before they can connect the culprit resources, then you can just force them to enter the user credential to the web browser, which is much better than providing them a console access. All right, so here you have, now you know the different options that you can initiate the easy VPN tunnel from the client side. Thank you for watching labminutes.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.